Thank you, Angela. Hi, everyone. Hi. So welcome to my presentation, uh, which I titled as uh, Lossless Upgrade of Bosch Deployment. I also call it uh, Stateful Upgrade of uh, Bosch Deployment. Yeah. Um, so the problem, uh, what we, we are going to talk about today is, so uh, basically I uh, working backing services team. Uh, so we basically deal with uh, different uh, data services. Uh, so which uh, also uh, consistently expected to have a stateful and these are uh, wrapped up in Bosch deployments. So few examples uh, in uh, from our product offering stack is uh, uh, PostgreSQL, then Redis, this MongoDB, then RabbitMQ. So uh, apart from uh, data offering for the customers, it is also important the other states of the deployment, right? So when Bosch deployment gets updated or upgraded, right? So then states needs to be preserved. So by state, I don't uh, mean that uh, the state of the customer's data, but it's more of transient state. So the transient states includes the memory pages, then open files. Open files includes normal pipes, then domain sockets, TCP connection, etc. So upgrade or migration we categorize in two types. Maybe in your production system, you want to upgrade your deployment, you want to upgrade the stem cell of your deployment, or maybe you want to uh, move your deployment from one Bosch to another Bosch. So in both the cases, uh, here what it happens, so you're creating a new VM. And also in case, uh, say you're updating the services, let's say PostgreSQL version 9.4 to 10, you're upgrading that time your process gets rebooted. And that exactly the problem starts. So app, the consumer of the data services, what they expect. So they expect high availability. Maybe that is that is that can be taken care by two, uh, two uh, constantly running processes. Yeah, that's fine. But when the second process comes up, or maybe when the failover happens, right? So how to take care of the states which are already there, which are already connected with the app? How about TCP connections? How about memory memory state? How about them? So uh, our problem is exactly there. So we are talking about that. So take one real life example. So let's say you're uh, uh, booking one uh, ticket service uh, and you're booking some tickets from online app and in the behind the scene, your app is consuming one backend database service. Let's say take example of Postgres. So when we are querying constantly, right? So the data after certain point of time, it will be served from the cache, not from the disk. So, uh, to in order to have the better performance but if the process restarts after upgradation all the cache are lost so how to save the state and when it comes back how to get it back so that the app doesn't face any performance issue after coming back right of the services so uh, from the app perspective it should be smooth enough uh, while you are upgrading your system in backend right so as I as I was talking about few backing services, so the backing services which are primarily memory intensive, let's take example of RabbitMQ, uh, so which uh, comprises of transient messages and queues, then also PostgreSQL. Uh, you might think uh, uh, it's not very memory intensive, but behind the scene it heavily depends on the primary memory. Uh, so which uh, as part of this is shared buffer cache. So the most of the queries are sort frequent queries are sort from the shared buffer cache. Also, uh, same as for Redis and other stateful services. So how do we provide a solution? So we need one stateful migration of the Bosch deployment or backing services, right? So the tool we are using for this prototype is Crew. So crew is basically responsible for checkpointing and restore of the process state or memory state of the deployment or of the services. 
right so that app experiences a smoothless migration in the, the down on maintenance activity so this slide is i think not new to you uh, so uh, it's uh, very popular so uh, here i am talking about the life cycle of a particular cf service instance so when managed service instance offers uh, the services so it comprises of four major parts uh, one is provision bind unbind deprovision so what is the most important part of it so after bind app starts consuming the services so that is the whole point of offering services right so the point is app should experience a smoothless migration when you're updating your deployment so here i'll bit of talk about crew so crew stands for a checkpoint and restore in user space so it runs in user space so uh, kernel module is not involved it doesn't run in kernel module it runs only in user space and it also heavily depends on the ptrace system call so it's linux based tool and ptrace is a system call which uh, basically helps you to hook in uh, hook into uh, 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 another processes uh, context or address space so at high level how it works so if a process is running so crew will do dump of the all the state files of the process and it will store as a image binary format and when the process again comes back after upgradation so then from the image it restores the state so uh, more about crew how it works so in our namespace let's say our process tree is there and uh, one root process and all the subsequent processes so recursively crew then takes the state of the all uh, kernel level objects fi uh, sockets uh, files sockets may be uh, domain socket or maybe tcp connections also and then pipes and then stores as image files by in binary format see here in detail how uh, checkpoint and restore is done by crew so in checkpoint so first it collects the process tree the root process and all is subsequent recursively child processes it collects and freezes it then it collects the task resources uh, associated with those processes so task task resources comprise, comprises of uh, uh, file descriptors uh, it also depends on the proc interface uh, linux proc interface uh, file system uh, fds fd infos then also memory maps then also it takes care of the uh, cpu registers so uh, here i'll probably a uh, bit of talk about the ptrace was what i was talking so ptrace is a system call so it helps to inject uh, a parasite code into the context of another process so that that code can collect the all the process state or memory from that tracy process so crew injects the parasite code and makes a domain socket connection back with the crew and that code collects all the uh, all the memory state from the tracy process and sends it back to crew and crew saves it in the image for uh, image format so at the last step it cleans up also using the same ptrace call after collecting all the state then it also discards the uh, parasite code which uh, which was uh, taking the backup so at restore what it happens so it first uh, crew comes up uh, uh, comes up as a process and then it forks the root process and all subsequent child process the whole entire process tree and attaches it to itself so the crew is now parent of this whole process tree right so then it restores the all the task resources associated with the process tree it restores all the memory pages then tcp connections everything it restores then it the then crew detaches it the re, the root process the whole entire process tree from itself and attaches back to init process so that it can smoothly run so here is a summary uh, so how crew uh, works under under the hood so as i was mentioning 
crew uses P-trace system call to inject the parasite code into the tracy process and in it uh, takes out all the memory state from it and it uh, saves in an image file and it also depends on the proc interface uh, to uh, take in account of all the FDs file descriptors and also any inodes associated with the uh, files for the specific files and then it also uh, relies on KCMP system call, uh, so which is basically responsible for uh, taking out the state between any interprocess communication, basically pipes. So till here, all the memory states are preserved. So now let's talk a bit to talk about the TCP connections. So uh, crew also takes care of the TCP connections. So how it does? So all the open TCP connections which are established right so it moves it back to tcp repair mode then what it does so then the socket buffer so a tx rx queues it captures or fetches all the data from there then it also takes care of the packet sequence number pertaining to the tcp connections then it also few tcp handlers data it also saves at the time of restore so if from the state file image file so it restores back the state then also for the tcp connections the socket buffers it restores back and at the end all the packet, packet sequence numbers so this is how it restores so here we'll talk about how the stateful migration happens in a bosch deployment so i'll talk uh, how for a RabbitMQ from a source VM to destination VM how the state migration happens and smoothly how it happens. So in the first source VM uh, say one RabbitMQ process is running, crew is running, the migration tool is running and then we take help of Bosch errands. So this, a, this is a prototype. So this Bosch errands what it does the, the corresponding scripts can be also injected into, into the drain script so that when you do Bosch stop or any controlled update uh, before the process is killing right so you can take capture all the states so we simulate exact the same behavior using the Bosch errand so it's nothing but running a script uh, so that script can be injected into the drain script so that it collects all the step so when it comes back again after starting you can give give, give them back so the app is connected to the uh, VM uh, so the service is up and running when the control update happens, when the backup happens, uh, so we dump the all the process states as I mentioned earlier, uh, so into, a, into a any distributed storage. It can be any persistent disk or it can be blob storage, anything, any distributed persistent storage, right? So as part of this, what we do? We run one Bosch errand, uh, say it crew dump. So for first what it does? So it stops the app communication to the service so that app cannot write the data now onwards yeah so after that it does the checkpointing and the checkpointing how it is done so into the image file so details i talked uh, so this is a slightly trimmed down version so then so this uh, source vm let's say you, you are upgrading one uh, stem cell update uh, you are upgrading your bosch deployment using stem cell update so the new of course the new vm will be created because because the stem cell version is new or uh, you're migrating vm the production system maybe one hypervisor to another hypervisor so in a controlled way you are you will be creating another new vm so in the new vm a whole fresh set of RabbitMQ, crew and Bosch errands and those processes will come up. But how about the old state which app is expecting, right? So we store from the, uh, from the distributed storage, uh, the process states and all the TCB connections. And and we give the communication back right so here also we run one bosch error command say crew restore so it uh, restores the all the dumped uh, state and it also gives back the ip rules so that app gets connectivity back to the new vm to the new services 
so in its demo time uh, so in demo what i'll show uh, so in demo uh, it only takes care about the memory state not the tcp connection so that can be easily integrated but as part of this demo only memory state will uh, see uh, how you are uh, backing up and then restoring i'm not sure from the back whether it is visible uh, maybe you can come with front Yeah, so we have created already one service instance, RabbitMQ service instance. So it comprises of five VMs, uh, two HA proxy, and uh, three RabbitMQ VMs. So in its uh, inside of the each VM, the RabbitMQ process is running. Also, the crew running. So, you uh, are showing the uh, RabbitMQ queues. So, uh, app uh, constantly pu pushing up some messages, but uh, using one API will be hitting uh, uh, will be hitting 10,000 messages into the queue, and after after that will be uh, stopping the process. And after uh, stopping the process, those messages should come back around 10,000 messages. So here it's showing how many how many are queued, how many ready to consume, how many are already uh, already in queue and all. So yes, uh, so 9,000 around 9,700 out of 10,000 already uh, is ready to consume, and uh, by the consumer uh, it's gradu gra gradually receiving. So here we are running the Bosch errand crew dump to take the state of the all messages. And also as part of that uh, uh, script, we also stopped freezes uh, the all the IP rules uh, so that app does not get any connectivity to the service. And yeah, it is uh, consuming one by one. Now we'll uh, now we'll uh, do one second. Yeah, now we'll do a hard stop of the uh, VMs so that uh, it will be recreated. It, I mean, basically here we are simulating the stem cell update behavior where the VM gets recreated. So stop hard of the uh, hard uh, of RabbitMQ. So all all the three VMs are deleted. Yeah, only those two HA proxy VMs are there. Earlier, you have seen five VMs. Then we are starting the RabbitMQ VMs, so it will then recreate all the VMs and the processes inside that. Yeah, you see there is no, no no message in the queues. Just a second. So uh, here we uh, also fire the command uh, Bosch errand command uh, for crew restore. So the all the messages will come back. Here also uh, we open the TCP connections uh, from the app so that uh, from the app it gets connectivity. So now the message is starting, uh, starting up. Yeah, you see now the uh, total number of received messages are increasing one by one and that should go till around 1000 and at the same time also the app also pushing up uh, some messages. Yeah, now 8000.
yeah it's decreasing so from the queue from the receiving end it, it's going on yeah 9600 9800 yeah around 10013 <coughs> So app also constantly pushing some messages. So 10,000 uh, messages are back. So we restarted. Uh, we restarted the process, uh, but states uh, all, all are back. So uh, this is example of RabbitMQ. So it uh, also similarly applies for any any memory intensive uh, services. Uh, so for that matter, I'll call a Postgres SQL is also a memory intensive services because it serves query and uh, the queries are cached. So those are served from cached. So those are part of transient state, not the persistent state. So it's very important for an app to have this smoothless uh, migration activity. You have any questions? Uh, please. Yeah, sure. Um, is the queue dump, you said that's basically like writing out binary image files for every like yeah. file I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should those be considered like plain text? Like does queue do any protection on that? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, cru like cru yeah, queue does encryption on those files, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so they're, they're safe. Yeah, th th those are safe, yes. Cool. Uh, the only other question that I had. Yes. Uh, when you're doing the first errand, um, it stops IP connection. So yes. you're saving the state, but it's not really, it's not no downtime, right? It's there is no downtime, yes. The, uh, so, uh, like, uh, when you were doing that, like, didn't that take RabbitMQ down? Like, what happened? If it doesn't, like, what happens between the dump and the restore, like, to the stuff that's missing, if you don't? Because when you stop the IP rules, does that, that stops all traffic. Uh, yes, uh, that, that stop all traffic. Yes. So for the maintenance window, I mean, app will experience a little bit of downtime. So uh, which is also true for any upgrade, right? Yeah. But states are back. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But, but on that question, if you have a multi-node RabbitMQ. Yes. Uh, yes, so in real world, how, how it will happen? So, they, uh, say there are two nodes or three nodes. So, from the one node, which is master, so traffic will start coming there. So, then when it stop and it will move the traffic there and we take state of this. And immediately after taking the state, I was talking, I will uh, restore that uh, state back to a new VM, but which is already running to, uh, to that process also, we can transfer these states. So in the back end, yeah, I mean, it doesn't lose all those messages. Uh, if you take example of RabbitMQ process, yeah. yeah. I guess it depends on the, the, the design of the service. Uh, yeah, so yes, yes, it also. Or like uh, exactly. It also depends on how uh, how you are handling the uh, high availability, say. Right, exactly. Yeah, how, how you are managing the failover, yeah. So uh, this is Bosch errand. So as I told, it can be injected in Dan script of that uh, particular process, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so you showed us a, what I would assume would be a migration. How does Creo handle an actual like code upgrade for one of the services? Code upgrade? Yeah, so say you're, you're wanting to do an upgrade of Postgres. Yes, yes. When Creo does the proc dump, it's grabbing basically the old code inside of that service. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, so exactly the same I was telling. So when it does upgrade, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, it also depends on the system files. Uh, so basically, we uh, you are you are right that maybe in 9.4, what is the system uh, file structure or directory structure might not be hold true for the uh, other structure. But from the data perspective, if you uh, take uh, uh, take example of Postgres SQ, uh, SQL shared buffer, so it should be consistent across the versions. So we are talking about uh, we are talking about uh, preserving those states. Yeah, yes, so that is, uh, I mean, purely OS, uh, I mean, OS related. So we are uh, here taking state of the particular process, uh, specifically Linux memory processes. Yeah. I guess I'm confused, like, this isn't about perfection, it's about minimizing what, what's going on. Like, in between that dump and, and the restore, the app is still trying to do something. Like, we're not freezing the app. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, exactly. So uh, say I mean this is also happen. I mean this 
restore uh, backing up restore and also your failover process so these two uh, these two should work together so it also depends on how you're handling the failover so let's say your failover is taking 10 seconds or 15 seconds of downtime so then uh, this state should be back immediately after 15 seconds of time so these two needs to work together yeah so it's about like not losing all the messages that were already there yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah, sure. Have you looked at uh, Bosch as a, uh, an update strategy thing they added? So there's one called Create Swap Delete, where it'll bring up a new VM mm -hmm. um, and get everything ready and then detach the participants yeah. and go over. Yes. Uh, minimize the downtime. Yeah, the yes. Over. And do you think it, this could be like plugged into drain scripts where yeah. uh, maybe you could have the IP table stop? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, Crew is heavily used for the container live migration. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, container and container spins have happened in a few seconds. But for the Bosch, I mean, for to achieve high availability, you need at least two VMs uh, based on your availability zones also. Sometimes three VMs. Uh, so, for uh, having the high availability. So as I told, uh, so from one VM you collect the state, and another VM when you're you're uh, moving the traffic back to the all existing VM, so you should also transfer the state to there. Any other questions, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what is your question exactly? Uh, so it's like incremental, uh, uh, like restore, so you can't uh, be doing the same process again or again. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Like yeah. The, the, the difference between the two states are very minimal yeah. and at that point you can like say, hey, Yeah, yeah, that would be great for super level opt optimization. So, uh, what it happens uh, if you take uh, example of database all the data, uh, so those are asynchronous, asynchronously also backed up or moved to the secondary VM. Uh, but uh, this process state, uh, it also can be uh, incrementally moved. Uh, but I would prefer to move at last when you have all the states because uh, it doesn't take uh, so much time. Uh, at least the transient state backing uh, backing part. Uh, so, incrementally would be challenging, I, I am not sure because uh, I mean after 2 seconds of time uh, how, what the state will be I don't know right. So, uh, so it's snapshotting of the state uh, uh, I am not sure but uh, at the end uh, you can definitely uh, go back. So when you are moving the traffic back to the another VM so you can definitely yeah, uh, move the states also from the previous master or previous serving uh, process. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. In the case you want to migrate from one VM to another VM, yes. you have the constraint that the new VM has to have the exact same IP address. Yeah, exactly. So, the, uh, yeah, th that, um, that matters how you uh, deal with the app connectivity. So, that is the binding parameters. So, you are behind one uh, virtual IP, say, so you have to also move the virtual IP back to the new VM virtual IP or say URL any so you have to move back the URL so that app gets connectivity. Yeah, sure. Uh, but how much fine tuning is the, the like what, what kind of it is kind of like one size fits all like you just use this thing to dump it restore it or uh, fine tuning in the sense can you can you elaborate? Like uh, Ah, okay. So yeah. So it's I think independent of uh, any services. So it's deal with only the Linux process. Uh, yeah. So that's it. I mean, it's you can apply to any any process for that matter. So for that matter, in any app or or a, any process, you can apply this. It doesn't depend on the service. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. 
Ah, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a prototype. So there are other uh, other few options. So Crew is not the only tool. Uh, OpenVZ, then uh, BLCR uh, is also a tool. So there are few other tools. So uh, you can check that out. But uh, uh, Crew has, I mean, it's uh, uh, many other advantages over uh, all other tools. But uh, uh, if we want to move into the production, so then we need really need to think I mean whether crew is the only option or we should use some other tools for the fine tuning perspective yeah okay okay Yeah, uh, so uh, if you uh, move to a different kernel, so again, as I said, proc interface, so those should uh, work similarly. Say uh, proc, then PID, FDs, right? So those file structure should be also same into the new system, otherwise it doesn't work. And, and uh, in, the target, in the target new system, you need uh, all the TCP ports to be available? Yes. All the PID not to be used? Exactly. It's a try Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, in that case, thanks everybody. Thanks for your time. Uh, so if you want to contact me, uh, so this is my email address and also I am part of Service Fabric. So you can check it out. It's an uh, Cloud Foundry incubation project. You can try out in your local and you can contribute. You can create uh, issues. So uh, we'll happy to help you. And also we have a Slack channel, Service Fabric. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time. Thanks.